Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my Rika Sun Avalon Decro file for the brand new Master Duel format. So uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple days ago, Konami gave us Rika Princess and Rika Konkon that you can unlock in solo mode, which is actually just insane. So now we have access to these cards and it just brings the Rika deck into such a huge new level. And it's actually just been insane. I've been grinding this on my stream for the last couple of weeks. If you want, I will probably be leaving a link to my playlist that I've been grinding master duel on and i will probably be also doing a stream on wednesday um so if you want to you can stop by and say hello uh but yeah first off uh in this profile i am going to be going through all the cards in the list for newer players to this deck uh if you are not a new player to this deck you can honestly just look at the list and you know you can just see it and that's about it you take a screenshot copy paste it start playing with it um there will be some gameplay at the end of the video, so if you want, you can also skip to that if you're not super interested in the deck profile itself, and you're not, um, you're already pretty familiar with the cards. But for those of you not familiar with the card, let's go through everything on the list. So we'll start with uh, Sunsea Genius Lokai. This is your main, like, you know, your main starter of your entire deck. Uh, you basically just want your Lokai on the board, and then you can link it off for your Dryas. And it's like a really cool little combo, because uh, if you think about it, this is your little seed, and it grows into your tree and then your tree grows into your entire forest because you're going to be spamming the field with level one plant monsters or not level one, but just a bunch of plant monsters in general. Um, so that's like your main combo. It seems really, really not very threatening to a lot of people because obviously it's just a normal monster. So a lot of times they'll just let it go through and then you suddenly have four monsters on the field and it's kind of a big deal. Next up, we have Rika Petal. This is your backup plan. So basically, when you're Lokai, when you don't have access to Lokai, or if your Lokai gets uh, ashed or like on your your unexpected die, you can go for your Petal combo, which is just the rest of your Rika engine. So it gives it takes a Rika and either adds it to your hand or sends it to your grave, uh, which does come up sometimes if you do need to send it to the grave in the case of like droll or something like that sometimes it does come up to send it to graveyard uh, but it's not super often but it does come up sometimes also during your opponent's end phase if you control only plant monsters or no monsters you can summon it back from your graveyard it's actually pretty insane the only times that like it's really not super great that this card's in the graveyard is if your opponent uses like gigantic sprite because then they're both locked into twos and rika pedals obviously a level one so kind of sucks in those situations but other than that this card's like absolutely phenomenal phenomenal as far as your grind game goes maxi is just you know three of a hand trap not really a whole lot to say about that we're also on the one copy of sunseed twin so this card's all also really important for your combo basically you just use it uh to summon off of sewing and then you can get four bodies on the field instantly uh because sunseed's twin is going to summon back your loci and then your uh dryas is going to summon an another sunvine from your extra deck so it puts four bodies on the field off of just one copy of sewing uh, Lone Fire Blossoms, also really good. I mean, obviously this card's also a one card starter if you need to. It's just the weakest one because it is susceptible to Ash. But we are playing as a one copy because sometimes you can use your Jasmine to tribute to summon Lone Fire and then Lone Fire tribute another monster and then you can get uh, it back to your field. And then later on in your combo, you can use Strena to add it back to your hand. So we'll go over that a little bit later, but basically this just comes up as a really cool uh, follow-up play for your turn two sometimes. We're also on three copies of Ash. Not really a whole lot to say about this. Uh, we're on two copies of Primula. This is really important to play two, I think, in this particular format. Uh, normally, you would play one, but I think that playing two is right in this format because of Runic cards. If they Runic banish one of your Primulas, you're basically out of luck for the entire game uh, because it is like a one-card way to get to um, Strena off of just a Glamour. So it's really important that you do play the Primula for that one combo. Um, because if you don't have a Primula in your deck, you can't really do that combo to get to Strena, but we'll get to that later once we get into some of the replays. Next, we're on three copies of Princess. This is the new one. This one's actually just insane. It's just a free extender. It's so broken, um, and you can activate it. It's a hand trap that you can, if you control a Rika, you can tribute a Rika to uh, shuffle it into your deck, actually tribute just a plant in general, uh, and then negate the effect from the hand or grave, and it gets shuffled. It's so good. It dodges called by. It's actually insane. They have to preemptively call by this in order to stop it because it shuffles for cost, so it's going to be in your deck by the time your opponent would call by it so it's actually just like really insane um some of the interactions with this card and cone cone are just so broken and you'll have to you'll see that in the 
once we start getting to some rhythm of the replays next we're on three copies of mudon this card's actually just also insane it is kind of annoying that it is a level six monster but what's really important is that if your dryas does get impermed or ashed or anything like that you can use your mudon to tribute it to extend further and it's actually just really really good so three copies of it is like an absolute must to be able to play through like basically any hand trap your opponent has Next round, one copy of Snowdrop. You don't really need them more than one. You could play two for the same reason that the Runic cards, um, like for the same reason of playing the Strena, but this isn't super important for your combo. It's just kind of there. Um, it is kind of like a second thought. It's like if you already have access to your Primula and your uh, Princess line, then yeah, like the Snowdrop's like a good second option. We're also playing uh, one copy of Lily Berea. You can search this off of Jasmine so that you can have an Omni Negate, and it's actually really good. Sometimes you do want to search for the Theory on Cross, which we'll get to in a minute. Next, we're on uh, one copy of Regulus, obviously for the Omni Negate off of the um, the Lily. So Lily has to search this Colosseum, which searches Regulus, which means that you get the Omni Negate. It's actually pretty insane. And it might be a little counterintuitive because a lot of your cards lock you into plants, and uh, Regulus is a machine, but you don't really have to it's the plant lock happens after you use those effects so you really just focus your th theory on engine first and then you summon the regulus and then you do your plant locking stuff we're on one copy of a nibiru um just so that if we uh, if we maxi our opponent and we happen to draw the nibiru we can use it um i think it's just like all right it's not like super good it's not super bad it's kind of whatever you can play it you could not play it it's kind of up to you uh, three copies of Unexpected Die. A non once per turn summon from deck is actually insane because if you get ashed, you can just activate another one. It's actually just broken. Super insane. Next, we're on three copies of Glamour. This is your Rota for your any of your Rikas. And if you tribute a monster when you activate it, you can add a Rika or rather a plant monster with the same level. It's really important that uh, this uh, comes up to search for a plant monster with the same level because you could add Petal, which is Eureka, and then a plant with the same level, which is Loki. You could also do the Primula, which is Eureka, and then search for Princess. Obviously, you could do it the opposite way too. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then another one that's really important is that you could do Snowdrop, which is an 8, and then you can search for a Lily, which is also 8, which is insane because that gives you access into your negation line through Eureka cards. So you have access to your negates through your Sunvine or your Sun Avalon cards and your Rika engine. So it's actually really cool uh, to play the Glamour, well, to play the Lily so that you have access to it through the Glamour. Next, we're on three co or two copies of Sunvine Sewing. Sometimes it does come up where you already have one in hand, but you do want to bait a hand trap out of your opponent. So playing two in the deck, if you have one in your hand, you can link it, activate the effect, and if they ash you, then you're fine because you could just activate the sewing anyways, and they just wasted an ash on nothing. Um, so a lot of times, if you are um, trying to figure out how to counter this deck, you want to save the ash for sewing. You don't want to save it for the driest because that's just really stupid. This is an activate once per turn, and if you ash it, then they can't activate it again. Uh, Coliseum for the same reason we listed before. We have two copies of Cone Cone. You could definitely bump this up to three if you wanted to, for sure. Um, but if you control a Rika, you can set a Rika spell trap from your deck. So it's basically just a stepping stone. Um, normally off of the Mudan, originally you would just search for Glamour, but now you can search for Cone Cone, which searches Glamour. So you have like this, it's just this extra free card on the board. And if you were to use your uh, Rika to tribute a plant monster to activate its effect, you can tribute one of your opponent's monsters instead, which is actually just insane. Because that means that now your Glamour can tribute your opponent's card and you can get two rotas for free and so being able to activate the cone cone activate glamour tribute their monster off get the snowdrop get a free lily and then you have an omni negate to push through their board is just actually just insane next we also have uh two copies of cosmic cyclone this is just because runic spray is like probably the most popular deck uh, just like get their fountain and stuff like that you know like it is pretty important to do stuff like that especially because sometimes you'll go against those random ladder decks that just play like floodgates and this deck has notoriously a hard time against back row and so may decking some form of back row removal is actually probably pretty important if you wanted to you could probably take out like the nibiru and play the third one if you really wanted if you're really struggling against back row decks. Uh, next, we're on two copies of Call By. This is to stop Max C. Same thing with the cross out. The main hand traps in the format are honestly Ash Max C, basically in any format, let's be honest. And so having, you know, six ways to answer Max C being the three Ash, the two Call By, and the one cross out, you have an okay time against Ash Blossom, or not Ash Blossom, but Max C. So it's not actually the worst thing ever. Next, we're on Rika Sheet, which is probably one of the most powerful trap cards in the game ever because 
of the existence of Cone Cone. Uh, because of the existence of Cone Cone, you can tribute one of your opponent's monsters to activate it and take control of another one of their monsters. So this effectively removes two monsters on their field. Um, so basically, if they go into their sprite combo, if they normal summon Nimble Beaver, Deep Sea Diva, summon another one, you can just activate Sheet and just take them. And it's actually just insane. So Sheet is actually just a must, must play. Next one, the three copy, or sorry, just the one copy of Therion Cross. So this is actually really good because if you control a Therion, you can activate one of these effects to either negate a monster effect or banish the monster. And so it's really important, and the majority of the time you're actually going to be using the banish effect because sometimes your opponent will be playing on Sprite and they'll, you know, send a Ronin Tone into the graveyard and then they'll activate Ronin Tone and banish a Swap Frog to summon it and then you'll chain the cross and banish the Ronin Tone and they're out two cards out of their graveyard. And it's actually just like pretty, pretty insane. There are some times where you can also hit something like circular in their hand, uh, because obviously if you hit the circular, if you banish it out of their hand, they can't summon it to the field. And so like banishing circular is actually really good in those situations. Um, but also having the option to negate the effect is very important. So it does come up sometimes. So just having an extra monster negate that you can do. Um, the reason we play this is if we're already plant locked, if we did have like a weird hand, our Lily can, instead of searching for Discolosseum for an Omni negate, you can at least search for a negation in the form of a trap card so it's not as bad uh plays a little bit less into dark ruler which is pretty nice uh, but it does play a little bit more into evenly so you do have to keep that in mind but it is a really cool option if you're already plant locked Next one, two copies of Strena. This is insane because you can detach it to add any plant or Rika from your deck to, or sorry, from your graveyard to your hand. Um, so being able to add something like a Lone Flyer Blossom that's just chilling in your graveyard, add it back, normal summon it, tribute that Strena with the Lone Fire effect, or just save this for a follow-up for the next turn is just like insane. It comes up a lot of the times. Um, another really cool option that you could probably do is add something like Primula or Snowdrop back. You can even add Lily back for a next turn if you do tribute it off for something and then you can get into your theory online if it gets like asked or something like that you do have a really a lot of options one of my favorite options that you can do is if you start with unexpected die and you go for loci and then you link it off for dryas and they ash your dryas or impermit you can use glamour to search for primula and princess primula will special itself Princess will special itself, which means you can make a Strena, and then you can Strena detach the Princess, so that way you're free through, you can play through any monster hand trap. You can add back Loki to your hand, and you haven't normal summoned yet, so you can normal summon the Loki. And then Dryas is not once per turn, so you can make it and do it all over again. And then you just do the same combo, uh, and throughout that entire combo, you're under a free monster negate, so you can play through any new other hand trap, which is actually just insane. We're on one copy of Kanzashi. This doesn't really come up. Um, you could play it. You could also not play it. If you're not super familiar with Kanzashi, like if you're new to this deck, you could probably just cut it and play anything else. Uh, another thing that you could play is maybe like Alsai. Uh, you could play this guy. He's pretty decent. You could also play another copy of Jasmine. Um, you have a couple options like that that you could do um, that isn't like awful. Uh, probably not play Zeus because you, you usually get plant logged pretty easily so it's not really worth it to play the Zeus but I guess you could if you really wanted to um, the main thing that we're playing Kanzashi for is that there is a Kanzashi OTK if you play Teardrop. Uh, if you were to put Teardrop and Kanzashi on the field, you can do exactly 8,000 damage to your opponent, which I'll go over in just a second. Um, but first we have Teardrop. So it's a quick effect if you have a plant monster attached to it <clears throat> and you can detach a material, target a monster on the field and tribute it. Uh, it's actually really cool because it does get over destruction effects because it's tributing, it's not destroying. Uh, so it's actually pretty neat for that. And then also if a monster is tributed, it gains 200 attack each time. So it just gets constantly bigger throughout your entire turn, which is really good. But um, the effect uh, to kill your opponent, if you put a, a teardrop and a Kanzashi on your field, you can attack with both of them directly, and that is 5200 damage. And then you can use teardrop's effect to tribute itself, because you can target itself. And then you can use Kanzashi's effect to target the teardrop to special it back. Um, so if a monster is tributed, you can target a monster in, your, in either graveyard and summon it back. So you just target the teardrop and summon it back. And they're at 5200, and you can attack with teardrop for 28, which is exactly 8000 damage. 
Um, Sacred Tree Beast Hyperiton. This is actually really important because of Strenda's effect, which actually I forgot to mention. Uh, if it's tributed while it has like Seize material, you can summon a rank 5 or higher plant Seize from your extra deck or graveyard and then attach it to it. So it's really good because if you are to tribute it during your opponent's turn to activate either Sheet or to activate Princess's effect, then you can use your Sacred Tree Beast to... Um, just summon that to your field and you can play through any form of like omni negate your opponent has like if they start with like dark ruler or droplet or something like that you can use your princess to tribute the strena so like negate one of their monster effects and then you can use strena to summon the hyperiton and then you have a monster negate through dark ruler which is actually really cool um so what's really cool is that you can detach a material that it has under it to negate that type of card so if they activate a spell card you detach a spell to negate a spell detach a monster to negate a monster etc um, during your turn if you activate that card type then you can attach a card type for, that's matching from your graveyard so if you activate a spell you can attach a spell to it during your during your turn uh, you can only use one effect per turn though so you do have to keep that in mind uh, it is really important sometimes uh, on your turn one if you can uh, activate like your cone cone and then reattach like any you know like sunvine sewing or a glamour to it as material so you'll have a monster and a spell negate so that way you can play through stuff like lightning storm or regeki or harpy's feather duster or something like that you can negate those type of cards because there's not really a whole lot of other ways outside of regulus that are ways to negate spell cards you can you have a lot of monster interaction but you don't really have a lot of spell interaction so it is important to have something like that in the deck next we're on three copies of dryas we play the three because if the one if this one gets uh interrupted you do need uh two for the combo um so basically if this gets like impermed you have to go into another one to get the sewing and then you have to summon another one um, to get the second effect of your healer, which is the same reason why we're playing two healer. Um, so basically, you do need all of these for the combo. A card that you don't need, but I would suggest playing is a Sunvine Thrasher. It is a super rare, so like you don't really need it. Um, if you want to save your super rare points, uh, craft points, if you want to save those. Uh, but I think that it's actually really important to play because there are situations where you do go second and you're in an open game state and you have just a, a loci. And with just one loci, it's exactly 8,600 damage. So you can just kill your opponent through anything. Uh, especially if they have one monster on the field, you can just kill them. It's actually pretty crazy. Next we're on one copy of Jasmine. You should honestly be playing two. I just don't have an extra ultra rare. You could be playing this over Gonzashi if you want. It's up to you, honestly, with that one. Um, then we're on one copy of Verte. Uh, so Verte is pretty cool because it's just any two effect monsters. So if your opponent does give you something throughout your like their combo or something like that, you can like normal summon like an Ash and turn those into plant monsters so you can have the Verte. Um, it's just important to have because it just is very generic being two effect monsters. We're not actually using it to fuse, although if you really wanted to, you could play Super Poly. Um, and a lot of the Preta plant monsters are actually uh, plant type. Uh, so if you look over here, we have Dragostopelia, which is a fusion monster and a dark monster. Trail Vertium, which needs three dark monsters on the field, which Verte can change one monster to dark. So it's not the worst thing ever. You could just change another monster to dark. And if there's another dark monster on the field, that's three. Send Super Poly, fuse their board. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could do that. But it's kind of whatever, honestly. I don't think it's worth it because sometimes they're kind of breaky. Um, next, we're on a copy of Sun, Vi Sun Avalon Melius. So this is really cool for two reasons. Uh, you can target your uh, Thrasher to make it so they can attack twice uh, if you really want. And you can use the Thrasher to target it to make this guy 3200. So that's 6400 damage. Uh, but it's it's the main reason that you use it is that you can summon Lokai back from your grave. And then you can immediately use uh, it to make a Bangal Answer. So this is kind of like the Selene for the deck. Uh, is the best way to explain it. It just turns any Link 3 into an actual Link 4. So that means that you can ac get access to Bangal Lancer, which is just a, like a free bounce. Uh, he's pretty good. He can also uh, banish himself, banish two or more Link monsters from your grave, and then summon him back. Uh, but he does get banished if you use that effect. Uh, what's really cool, uh, something else I forgot to mention, is that Sunvine Sewing can protect him. Uh, if they, he would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish the Sewing from the grave instead. So a lot of times people use Regeki or Lightning Storm and stuff like that uh, just to clear all the attack position monsters. And you can just use Sewing to protect it. And then they usually just scoop on the spot like that when they realize that he's just nothing happened, honestly. So it's pretty insane. 
But honestly, that's about it for the deck profile. Um, let's go ahead and get into some games. All right, everyone, for the first thing I wanted to show is hopping into a solo mode uh, to really show you guys um, what the combo looks like. So you'll just see here in a second, I'm just going to use Just Unexpected Die. Um, so we're going to search for our copy of Loki, which is going to turn into a Dryas, which is going to search for our Sewing. Uh, let's get there in just a sec. Uh, next, our Sewing is going to go ahead and search for a Twin. Once we activate it, uh, special it to the field, and it's going to trigger two things here uh, because our uh, it's going to take a thousand damage. So we have both twin and Dryas to activate. So I usually go twin as chain link one, targeting the loci, and Dryas as chain link two. The reason I do this is if our opponent does have gamma, uh, we can actually protect or ogre. Uh, we can use sewing to protect it, so it's actually really important that way. The other reason that you will want to do it this way is that Dryas does summon here. Just in case if your twin, uh, if you accidentally summon your loci to this zone, then you can't resolve your dryas properly. So that is another reason why you want to do that. Uh, we can just use the healer to get a free extra life points. You could have also summoned Thrasher. The extra 300 life points really doesn't matter. Uh, we can link these two off and go into our copy of Jasmine. And then we can go ahead and link off the twin into dryas. And then we can link off this loci into healer so a lot of linking off there uh, but we do get this board here which we have a healer dryas jasmine so we're going to go healer targeting dryas which will give us 300 life points and then our jasmine's going to go ahead and mandatory trigger to search uh, so we can search anything here i like to search lily because it's just a free negate so we do have the coliseum already but um in the case where you already have the coliseum like i do um you can just summon it um, I like to equip the twin. I know I just equipped healer, but I usually do that so I don't accidentally click this healer on the board. Uh, so you do have to keep aware that you're targeting this healer uh, to get rid of. Uh, so I usually like to equip the twin just so that that's not an option. Uh, but then from here, you can activate your Jasmine's effect to tribute your healer. And I like to just summon a Lone Fire Blossom so that I can get it back later with Strena if I need to. Uh, but in this case, I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, but it is like a really cool option that you can do. Uh, you can go for Melius here since you've already used the Jasmine. We can just get rid of it now, so it doesn't really matter. So we can go for Melius and target the Loki to summon it back. Um, so there we go. And then we can link off the Melius and the Loki into our Banga Lancer. So from there, we're pretty good. Because um, now we just have a free rank 4. And then we can now use this Lone Fire to get access into our Rika engine. So we can tribute the Dryas off, because it's not really doing anything else on the board. Um, so we have a couple options here. We could go for the Petal, or we could also go for Mudan. If you already have Petal, it's not really super necessary. The Petal's kind of like whatever, honestly, anyways. So I'm just going to show the Mudan anyways. So we'll just go Mudan. We can go Mudan's effect to search for a Rika spell trap. So we're going to search Cone Cone. We already have Glamour in this case, but I'll show you as if we don't have the Glamour. Um, so, and let's also pretend that the Lily actually searched the Colosseum instead. So we're going to activate the Colosseum and get a search for Regulus because we're not plant locked yet. So we do have to remember that. So now we can go for our Regulus. We probably could have done this before we did the Lone Fire play, but it doesn't really matter. As long as we do it before the the lock then we're fine uh, but now from here on out we're safe through nibiru unless they have nib plus valor or something uh, but we can go for cone cone and you have two options here if you really want to end your board a little differently so you could either go for strena or you could go for uh sheet so uh you can probably go for the glamour play i think is better obviously if you already have the glamour you want to search sheet because you could just activate this anyways but then our glamour can go ahead and tribute off our uh, lone fire and we can search for level fours, so we can search for Pramula, and we can search for a princess. Uh, then we can go our Pramula's effect to special, since a monster we control was tributed, summon itself, and then we can go princess effect to special herself for free. And while princess is on the field, we're plant locked. Also, we're plant locked because of Cone Cone's effect, so you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, but it doesn't really matter for this combo. We're going to go for Strena. And Strena can add anything back from the grave, and this is where the Lone Fire comes in, because we can detach the Princess, target the Lone Fire, you could also target like literally anything else you want, but I like to target the Lone Fire because it does give up really good follow-up, 
and then we can pass on this board. So uh, we have follow up and then we have the other four cards we started with. So this was just a one card combo. We have a negate, a bounce, and we have a monster negate uh, with follow up. So it is pretty good. And as far as, you know, I mean, obviously in this combo, we did also get a theory on cross because we already had the Colosseum. So we do have an extra banish or negate. Uh, we have a, you know, we have insane cards. We could have also searched for sheet. I mean, it obviously depends on hand to hand, but this is just the generic one card combo gives you a negate, a tribute, a bounce, and then a monster negate. So that's pretty awesome. And follow up. So a uh, really good one card combo that gets your engine rolling. So this is really just what I wanted to show. All right, so for the first replay I wanted to show was against Exosister, and it's not exactly the best replay ever, but I did want to show the Thrasher line. Um, Unfortunately, uh, you'll see here in just a second, but uh, basically, if you just have any access to Lokai through uh, your opponent's back row, like, or through your opponent's board, you can just kill them. Um, so, in this case, we had the Lokai, and we can go into it. Um, we did have to kind of bait out a negate here, because he had a Dryas. Unfortunately for us, we had a Sewing, so, like, the Dryas didn't really matter, uh, so it was really nice. So, we're going to go for Colosseum here. So the important thing is that we need to play through the Sophia, right? And so if we use the Lily, we're going to bait out the Sophia here. And then he's going to get the effects. He's going to go for Michalis. And then Michalis is going to banish the Lily, which is completely okay with us. We honestly just wanted the Michalis to do something so that we could play through their board. Um, so that, that was actually just perfect because now we have the Sewing to do our combo. So we're going to go for Sewing. We're going to go for Twin. And then uh, Twin's effect is going to summon Lokai. And Dryas is going to summon Healer. Um, and fortunately here, I believe our opponent scoops. So I will just say that right now. But what the combo line is, is that we're going to turn the Twin, Healer, and Lokai into our copy of Melius. And then Melius can bring back our Lokai. Uh, so basically, just imagine the, Lo or the Melius is right here. Uh, the Twin would be off the field. Uh, then we can use our Lokai to go into Thrasher, and our Thrasher would target our Melius to gain 2400 attack, three times its link rating. And then uh, we can use our Melius' effect, which can target a Sunvine monster that it points to, and then it can attack a number of times equal to the Sun Avalon monsters we control, which we control Dryas, and we'll control Melius, which means that it can attack twice. So it's going to be 3200. Uh, our Sunvine Thrasher is going to be 3200. That can attack twice, so that's 6400. And to get the remaining little bit of damage, we just link off the Melius and the Dryas into our Bangalancer. Um, and because that's a link four, and then we can go Bang Lancer's effect to target an effect monster opponent controls, take damage equal to its attack, which would be Michalis. So we're going to take 2,500, and then it goes back into the extra deck. And then from there, we have a 6,400 attack points uh, Thrasher with a 2,500 attack point Bang Lancer. So that's 25, that's going to put him to 55. Attack again, that's going to put him to 23, if I, or maybe 33. I can't remember if I'm doing my math wrong. I think 23, and then we attack with the uh, Thrasher again for game. So that's basically how that will work, but unfortunately for us, our opponent just scooped right after this. So uh, I figured I'd mention the combo just to show you guys what the Thrasher line would look like in a actual scenario. All right, for the next game I wanted to show you guys is what happens when your Sun Avalon combo gets interrupted. Um, so for this time, we are going to start with Unexpected Die. We get hit with Maxi. We're obviously going to chain this Ash here, uh, but that's not why this combo is here. Uh, we're going to be summoning Lokai off of Die, pretty obviously, and then we can use our uh, Lokai to link off into Dryas. And then from this point, we are actually going to get into our Sewing, but our opponent's really smart here, and they are going to Ash our Sewing. Normally, if you're playing against an opponent and they're not very smart, they'll normally ash the Dryas, which is insane, because then you can use the Glamour to get into Primula Princess, go for Strena, and since we haven't normal summoned, we add this Lokai back, summon the Dryas, and do it all over again, uh, which is actually just insane, plus we'll have a, a monster negate throughout that combo. Uh, but our opponent was actually really smart and held the ash for sewing, so I want to show you what in, we would do in those cases if we did have access to our Rika engine. So we can do something like this where we can use our Glamour, distribute off the Dryas, search for Pr Princess Primula like we would normally do, and then we can use both of those to summon and get into our Strena. And then 
if we don't have access to the pint pretzel, we would probably just end on this where we would add back the loci and probably just pass on a board similar like this. But we do have access to pedal, so we're going to go ahead and get the Mudan, use Mudan to tribute the Strena, get access to Strena's effect and Mudan's effect to get Cone Cone, which means that we can get a uh, Sacred Tree Beast, activate our Cone Cone, use our Tree Beast to attach so that we're going to have a monster and spell negate, and then we're going to use our Cone Cone to set Sheet. So if we count it up, we have a tribute with Cone Cone, we have a tribute take with sheet and we also have a monster spell trap negate and a maxi so we're, we're in a pretty good position honestly here what is this one two three you got this as two so one two three four five interrupts six if you count the maxi um i guess it depends on if you count the princess as one or two interrupts because you're probably going to be using it with the cone cone but um that's besides the point so we're going to pass here and uh we are up against runic i believe it's runic sprite although i'm not too sure um because you'll see here in a second so they activate the card to destroy the cone cone we're going to negate that maybe we shouldn't have done that but i mean i don't think it really matters uh but he is gonna he unfortunately has a second one so he just goes ahead and pops it anyways um, and then use the fountain to shuffle back and draw two he drew a flashing fire which i believe uh is to special a runic from deck and i chain a max c and from that point he just scoops because we still have a monster negate and we also have a take so if he's on sprite he's in a really bad position all right so this is our next game i actually didn't check what we are up against but we're about to find out uh we are up against uh, i believe this was tri brigade sprites uh, if I remember correctly. So, unfortunately, we didn't open any form of hand traps, but uh, he opened pretty much the full combo, so he could basically go off and link off his light heart into elf, and then use the elf to bring back kits. Uh, probably going to go for uh, bear brum. Nope, not bear brum, actually. He's going for uh, oath here. Uh, gigantic sprite summons blue, so he has the sprite engine now. So, we have to deal with a bounce. And we have to do with a uh, Jin, which is a form of negation, and then also the starter, which I believe he searched that starter off of the jet. So um, we have to worry about a bounce, uh, negate, and a spell trap negate. And then whatever these back rows are, which presumably we could uh, pretty much pretty easily figure out that one of these is Revolt because he didn't go for the, the bear rum line, so which means he probably has a Revolt. So we're going to try and bait some stuff out here. So I think that I start out with the Colosseum uh, because the Colosseum is just kind of like an afterthought anyway. So if like he does negate this, then it's whatever. If he doesn't negate that, then that, that's pretty awesome. We're going to have a 2400 tech uh, Lily that can pretty much get over anything on his board. Uh, but yeah, the carrot is going to go ahead and negate that and destroy it, which is completely fine with us. We're going to go for Lokai here and then he's going to go and try and bounce it which is also fine. We have a Sunvine Sewing, which we can uh, summon our Loki. Take a thousand damage. We can link that off for a Dryas. And since we played two in our deck, we can search for another one. He's just going to negate this, which is honestly a really stupid idea because uh, Sewing is just an activate once per turn. So like the Sewing that we're going to search doesn't really do anything. So I think that that was a misplay on his part. Uh, everything else was pretty fine, but that was just a really stupid idea, especially because uh, Gin Buster uh, inflicts 500 damage to me, which means it triggers Dryas' second effect. If we take battle or effect damage, we can gain it back and then summon a Sunvine from our extra deck. So realistically, that was like the worst option he could have ever chosen. Uh, so he just loses really hard to that. Uh, because then Heather's just going to summon, we're going to use Glamour to get access into our Snowdrop and our Lily, and then Lily can go ahead and get back our Healer. He's going to chain the Call by on it, which is fine, Lily's just going to be an extender anyways, we were just going to get, like, the trap card, so it's not really that important. We're going to go for Snowdrop effect here to go for Petal. Petal's effect is going to search, and he's just going to scoop it up, which is very silly, I don't know what he was really thinking there. But realistically, we could have searched for Mudan. Uh, and then we could have got access to uh, both Teardrop and our uh, Cone Cone, which we had a sheet in hand, so we could tribute his board on his turn, which is actually pretty insane. All right, for this next replay, we're going to be showing you how to Sun Avalon combo without Sun Avalon cards outside of Sewing. Uh, so basically, if you don't have access to Loki, you can do something like this. So we have Petal, uh, which gets Ashed here. So basically, in this combo, Petal can be any level four lower monster. So it's actually like pretty decent. Um, it could be Primula, it could be Princess, it could be a bunch of different things. So uh, our Petal gets Ash, which is a little unfortunate. We can link it off for Dryas, which unfortunately won't get the search because we didn't use Loki as material. But our Sewing is going to be activated here, which means our Dryas can also activate to uh, search for Healer. 
uh, summon healer, and then we can use Glamour to tribute it off and search for Princess, and we can also search for Primula. Then we can use our Princess, or sorry, our Primula and Princess effect to link them off, which means we can go into Jasmine. We can link off the uh, Primula to go into Dryas and our healer, uh, which means our healer can target our Dryas to gain a couple life points, which triggers our Jasmine to search for Lily. Um, and I don't believe at this moment we are plant locked because our petal got negated uh, and the the plant restriction is tied to the effect. So we should be able to go for Lily effect here and get a search for Discolosseum, which we can activate and search for our Regulus. And then we can link off the Lily uh, in a second, I guess. Oh, <laughs> our opponent here uh, activates Ghost Ogre on our Jasmine, which is the worst decision they could have ever possibly chosen to do because uh, we have sewing in the grave, which means we can sewing just protect it and literally nothing happens. So we're gonna summon Lone Fire and at that point our opponent is gonna scoop, but uh, we pretty much had everything. We could use our Lone Fire to tribute off the healer and get access to, you know, Mudan or whatever we wanted. Uh, and then we can go into Bangalancer and then we can summon the uh, Regulus, activate the Cone Cone. We have Sheet, we have Sheet, Regulus, uh, Bangalancer, we're, we're in a really awesome situation. So uh, our opponent just played that very badly, right? We have our next match here. Um, I don't remember exactly what we are up against, but I think we'll see here in just a second. So we opened a general loci combo, so we just normal summon it. We have Ash, but in this case, we can play through it pretty well with this Mudan. So we're going to go Mudan effect. Unfortunately, we do get max seed, so we kind of have to make our combo a little bit less. So we're going to go for a Cone Cone, and then we're going to Cone Cone set a sheet, and we're probably going to pass here. So this isn't perfect, honestly. It's pretty bad, but uh, it is really nice that we do have a sheet that we can tribute our opponent's monsters to take control of them. So I think it's going to be okay. So we are up against Flawanderese. So uh, Robina summons Stree, banish the Loki. That's pretty all right. Uh, he goes for Eaglin, go for Mpen, search for the trap card, um, get back the Robina for the next turn and get the trap. Tribute that off, he's going to go for Ryza, which is going to get rid of our Mudan and Sheet, rather bait them out. So we're going to go Sheet Effect, we're going to Tribute and take the Eaglin, and then he's pretty much going to have to set a card and pass here. So uh, I believe he just goes, sets the uh, Flunderies Trap, which we have a Cosmic Cyclone for, and at this point, I believe that we know all the cards in his hand. I believe that we know he has uh, Robina and Eaglin. I could be completely wrong and a street. I think we know all three cards in this hand, actually. So, uh, oh wait, no, the Eaglet's on the field. So we know Robina and Stree. Uh, we draw for turn, we have a Mudan, which we can tribute the Eaglet for cost, uh, which he has max C for yet again, unfortunate for us, but it's all right. He drew max C, or maybe he already had it, I don't know. Uh, so we go Cone Cone to search for Mudan. We're gonna summon Petal and get a free search for our princess so that we can have a form of negation during our opponent's turn. We can go attack for a thousand. We're gonna not play into this maxi and we're gonna pass our turn. Uh, Cause we can't kill him. So there's not really a whole lot of reason to play into it. He's gonna go for Stree. He's gonna banish the Eaglin uh, or banish the Empen and add the Eaglin back to hand. Go for Eaglin's effect, which is gonna search. We're gonna chain Princess to negate it. Um, and from this point, he just kind of has to pass. So uh, we know he has Robina in hand. We don't know the other two, but it's probably all right. So we're going to go Cone Cone to set Glamour, and then we're going to go Glamour, tribute the Stree, get two free searches, search for Snowdrop and the Lily, and we can go Lily effect, targeting anything in the grave. Um, and then we can go effect to search for the Theron Cross. I don't believe we can summon Regulus at this point because we are plant locked, but at this point we can either establish a million negates or just kill him. So it doesn't really matter. He's just going to scoop it up. All right, well, that's going to do it for today's video. Um, once again, here's the list, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed some of the games. If you have questions about the deck, feel free to leave anything in the comment section below, and I'll be answering those as we go along. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.